Hello, it's Rachel and today's project is a mixed media canvas. I'm starting out using a Prima 8x8 watercolour panel and I'm going to stamp this with one of the Prima Jamie Doherty stamps and for this application I'm using Archival Link in Blue Violet and I'm going to take a second generation stamping because I only want a very light outline of the image. The next thing I'd like to do is add some colour to my image, so for this I've chosen the Prima water soluble oil pastels and I'm going to be using these directly onto the canvas and liquefying them with a brush and some water. Um, I did choose the mixed media brushes by Prima for this um, just because at a later time I'm intended to add some acrylic paint as well, although equally I could have used the Prima water brushes.
once I've finished laying colour onto the face, um, I decide to choose a magenta colour for the base colour on the hair and I also add some purple to this, um, I think the colour is violet. And it is around this stage of the project that I decided I didn't want to keep all of the butterflies that are part of the uh, stamped image. So you will see um, shortly here, once I've liquefied this first layer of colour on the hair, that I go back with the magenta and purple and start taking out some of those butterflies. I've chosen a blue colour for the background, well two blue colours in actual fact, the first here is the light blue and if you want to use the oil pastels for a background like this and you want it to be really smooth I wouldn't suggest colouring directly onto a watercolour surface, I would take either take the paint directly from the tip so use a, a paintbrush to take the colour off or scribble some of the colour onto a non-stick um, craft mat or a ceramic tile um, and pick up the colour from there. The reason that I'm adding the colour in this way is because once I've liquefied the first layer of colour I'm going to go back with more colour and also use a blending technique that is combined with acrylic paint to get a smooth um, colour application on my background. So as you can see I've taken two of the butterflies off the original stamped image by painting them out and now I'm starting to add some colour to the three butterflies that I do want as part of the final piece. Um, I do change my mind about these colours, I've started off here with um, a yellow orange and adding magenta to the outer wings of the butterflies, um, however I wasn't particularly satisfied with this colour combination against the um, rest of the colours in the piece so you will see at a later time I paint out the butterflies, I use some gesso over the top and then I recolour them in a combination that I was much happier with. And now it's time to work on smoothing that background out so I'm adding a second layer of the oil pastel to begin with and using it much more generously this is a darker blue shade than the original light blue and I'm also combining it with some acrylic paint this is titanium white by Reeves and I use this with a little bit of water so it's a bit more glazy and it makes for a really smooth background when you combine it with the oil pastel. And once I've finished adding the white paint onto the background, um, I also add some white paint into other areas of the image, so um, also onto the hair, I add some additional colours, um, it eventually becomes more um, purple and blue. Um, and again, once I've painted out the butterflies and recolour those, I also add some of the white paint to those and other areas of the piece. So I will let you watch the um, rest of the colouring process and get back to you when that is complete.
When most of the colour is laid down on the image and the background, I decide to add some stamping and for this I've taken a background stamp by Prima. This is a text stamp and I'm going to stamp this onto the background using Stays On Ink in Ultramarine Blue. These are Prima's Art Alchemy paints in the metallic lime peel and the metallic green olive and I'm going to use these with a stencil with a star pattern on it to further embellish the background. Now I'm going to use some of the Finiba Mechanicals, these are the mini stars and I'm going to first paint these with black because I originally intended to add some of the um, metallic waxes over the top of them but I did change my mind and go for some Lumia paint in pearlescent blue instead because this seemed to go better with the colours um, that I already had on the canvas. So I'm adding these, they'll go with the stars that I've stenciled onto the background and pull out some of those deeper blue shades as well as add a dimensional aspect to the finished canvas. Whilst I'm waiting for the paint on the stars to dry, um, I'm taking an ink tense pencil, this is in violet, and I'm adding back the bodies of the butterflies and the antenna. And I'm using a pencil mostly because it's quite a, a fine, intricate um, place and I needed something quite fine um, to be able to put that detail back in. And then obviously once I liquefy that colour, the um, vibrancy will come through as the name suggests ink tense pencils have a very high intensity um, of pigment to them and once I've finished adding the butterfly detail I also use the ink tense pencils to add some further definition to the eyes the eyebrows and the lips and then I use a combination of the ink tense pencils with some prisma colors and also a black micron to add even more detail so the black micron I use for the pupils of the eyes and um, in other areas on the eyes and then the ink tents and the prisma colours are used mostly on the hair
and here once again I'm using the metallic paint in the lime peel and this is just so that I can add some of that shimmery colour that appears in the stenciled stars onto the butterfly wings so they all tie together nicely and I think that the butterflies do look more effective with some shimmer on them. And now it's time to go back to the Finnebear mini stars. These have the pearlescent blue Lumia paint on them, so they match quite nicely with the stays on ultramarine blue ink that was used as part of the background. And also there is shades of the same blue in the hair. Um, I use some Ranger Glossy Accents to add these to the canvas because it's a fairly strong adhesive and I always feel that this is a reliable way to go when adhering metal pieces. And we're almost at the final stages now. I'm just going back with that metallic paint in the lime peel again and adding a little of that around the eyelids and just underneath the eyes. This will give them a little bit of sparkle and it also ties together those elements so the paint appears on the background on the butterfly wings and also on the girl's eyes. As a final touch now I'm going to use some Martha Stewart um, stars. These are a translucent iridescent component. I'm using some of the soft gel in gloss to add these to the canvas and I've chosen the gloss instead of the matte because when you've got something that's either shiny or iridescent or metallic if you use a matte adhesive for that then you are going to lose the shine or the shimmer or iridescence and obviously that is not um, something that you want to do if you've chosen to use a particular finish. Very last thing I'm going to add are some of these small sparkly jewels and this is to create a necklace for the girl. Again I'm using the gel medium in the gloss finish. And now all that's left to do is finish off the sides of the canvas which I did not initially paint um, because I wasn't too sure what colour I wanted these to be in. So I'm using the Lumia paint in the pearlescent blue that ties together nicely with the other shades of blue on the canvas and the fact that the metal stars were painted with this colour. And that is the last step in today's project. I really hope you enjoyed watching. This was a very fun canvas to produce. If you are interested in any of the products that have been used in this video, please check out the links in the video descriptions and you will also find social media sites there too.